Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. And Joe Darlington from being James Bond. Oh boy. This can only mean one thing. <laughs> we, the matching cardigans say it all. <laughs> it's not the Smothers Brothers. It's not, but it's <laughs> nearly as bad. We're back and we're here to test a new theory. Now by now, hopefully you have seen our original theory, which I want to give credit to my friend Joe. Thank you. What was the original theory about the Bonds, Bond actors? Uh, yeah, the original theory, again, came up just a casual conversation that uh, I always felt that the first Bond movies tended to be the best ones of mm -hmm. each actor. Yeah. Uh, basically because the producers would sort of take the opportunity to say, we need to get back to basics and back to what James Bond is all about. And with that, you know, they bring in the, all the original Bond elements yeah. and they usually hit home runs. They do. And then as we started to film mm -hmm. the different vlogs that you've seen, something very interesting happened. Well, I think we took a break around halfway through, through the day. And again, mm -hmm. Joe was inspired and said, you know, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if the first ones are the best, which the theory wasn't really working. Uh -huh. um, are the last ones the worst? Yeah. And, and it was interesting because we're thinking like, well, maybe it's the last one because, you know, that particular actor was petering out, the writing wasn't getting so bad, mm -hmm. and they knew it was a bad one, maybe the box office, and they were mm -hmm. like, we've got to refresh this, so yeah. in comes a new Bond. Exactly, right, Al almost sort of by its own nature. Like, you know, if it wasn't the worst, then we wouldn't have changed actors, or we wouldn't, right. have, we wouldn't have set a different course. So we are starting with Sean Connery, <laughs> and his last I'm laughing film, already because I know this one's gonna get, get good. <laughs> <laughs> Joe asked me a very good question. I have to share it with everybody out there. He says, uh, hey, you know, should we pull our punches? Should we, um, I mean, should we kind of filter ourselves? And I said, it's us. You yeah, can't. No. 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 <laughs> so uh, we will lose followers. Uh, we will offend people. Yeah. So buckle up. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get brutal. It's going to get rough. <laughs> and we're talking about Diamonds Are Forever. Yes, we are. Sean Connery's last film. Now, um, I know some of you know the lore a little bit. Um, obviously, Sean Connery, You Only Live Twice, really bad experience for him mm -hmm. with the producers. There was a lot of infighting, and he said, I will never. It's almost like a Daniel Craig slash my wrist. I'll never do another Bond. Yeah. Goes away. They find George Lazenby. That didn't work out. Uh, great movie, but George and the producers, not yeah. so much. And they woo Connery back. They lower him back. What was it for? It was like a million dollars and producing other movies and a million dollars to Scotland or something? something. Or? Yeah, I think he, yeah, they paid him like a million dollars and I think he even donated most of it, if not all of it, to charity. But yeah. it was literally the highest paycheck ever offered to an actor at that time. That's right. So so they got him back for one more and he, he came in dragging his feet, kicking and screaming. He did it. <laughs> he did it. And, and our question today to each other has to be, uh -huh. Does it show? Does it show in the writing? Does it show in the movie? Does it show in his acting? Maybe yeah. even the way he looked. So you had to go back and watch this like I did. I certainly what, did. What, what were your initial feelings watching Diamonds Are Forever again? Um, well, I will say one thing as kind of an initial positive, just to, just yeah. to, before the beatdown begins. Uh, I, I And it could just be simply that I'm getting a little older and a little fluffier. Um, but I kind of felt like Connery didn't look as bad as I remembered. I kind of felt oh. like... You know, it, it was a, it was barely uh, ten years later since the first one, but he kind of came into this one looking like you know somebody's grandpa. Um, mm. You know, I mean, he, the years had definitely taken its toll. Now, yeah. Maybe that's even a little harsher than I mean, but he looked like an older, different kind of guy. I, I kind of went through it this time, and I, I thought like it doesn't look as bad as I remember. That's good. Yeah. I, I thought he looked a little atrophied. Yeah. You know, there was the one thing when he's going to Tiffany uh, Case and she's in the bed and he's disrobed. You, you see yeah. his chest. And yeah. he's got that kind of soft, atrophied, you yeah. know, junior executive type body. Dad bod. He didn't, I mean, yeah. come on. I'm going back to Connery and Dr. No, who was a weightlifter, who yeah. was all tight and everything like that. Yeah. And then, you know, from a look standpoint, you know I got a hit on this. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the outfits, the, oh my the pink goodness. ties and the Oof. oversized blazers and wow. just the way he looked. And I, I, I think it will go down in infamy. The The fact that he, when he first shows up, the first thing you see is a flip-flop barefoot when yeah. he steps onto the rock and it's like, Wow! Yeah, like I can't. I'm like he's literally wearing flip flops, and I'm just like, yeah. And not the good Thunderbolt. And he's not like just... at the, he's not at a. Well, I mean, I suppose there's a beach nearby or something right. or other. But I mean, he's not there because he's he's not wearing beach wear per yeah. se. He's yeah. wearing that weird 
awful short sleeve beige outfit. Oh. And, and I know it's a sign of the times. I know that, sure. you know, the, the year that Diamonds Are Forever came out, I want to pour forgiveness over it because I want to <laughs> say, oh yeah. my gosh, they should have, you know, giant, you know, wingspan collars and, mm. and you know, Wint and Kid should have these crazy safari jackets because, <laughs> and yeah. I, mean, I mean, I want to forgive them on so many things. But then yeah. I start to go back and say, you know, is it campy or is it a, just a bad movie? Uh, a little of both. Okay. A little of both. I mean, you you can, this is, the Moore apologist, the Roger Moore apologist will always cite this movie, and, and rightly so. They, you know, if you, if you want to blame the, the lighthearted campiness of the Roger Moore movies squarely on Roger, take a look at Diamonds Are Forever, because yeah. they, were, they were obviously going off in a certain direction, and it shows, you know, and... and one of the things to me that is almost personally offensive about this movie <laughs> is that it's, and again, it's, it's just goofy. It's just kind of meant to be over the top popcorn fun. Right. But the fact that this is sort of a, a response to Honor, Majesty, Secret Service, which to me, by comparison, it, it's, right. it's like po it's like comparing poetry to 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 the back of a Bazooka Joe comic. Uh, you know, it, wow. it, it, you know, I mean, like it's, I it's, love that. And again, it, it's it's so when I think of it in terms of that, in terms of the fact that they were so annoyed with Honor, Majesties. Yeah. Wow, does it kind of hurt that this is what they give us in response? Here's what you want movie goers here's what you're going to plunk down your ten dollars eat your popcorn yeah. and sit down well even the characters were sticky i mean you know yeah. if i looked at the characters and i say well david come on as a sign of the times yeah i'll i'll elevate myself and go well even the music like da, 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 da. <laughs> you got this really yeah. good like you know diamonds are forever uh, which is fantastic and then yeah. the music i guess maybe it's just mostly the winton kid music but just the the, the music is so campy. Yeah, yeah. It takes me right out of the whole idea that this <laughs> yeah. is a James Bond film. Like, he is down and dirty. He's using, mm -hmm. using a water pistol. The bad guy, Blofeld, uh, dresses, you know, a as a woman, and then uh -huh. he's petting a cat. And, you know, wait a minute. Isn't that the guy from You Only Live Twice? And I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. and. The whole movie has got me <laughs> stressed out. Right. Did they dig up Henderson's corpse and Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, it's so funny too. And again, watching it again was sort of a it was kind of a refresher course. Even just in the first couple of frames, I've heard people say that the pre titles is actually pretty good right up until they get to the mud pie scene. Right. I don't even agree with that because I kind of felt like when you watch the pre it's almost like everything you need to know about this film right. is in the first few frames. When when the guy yeah. comes busting through the the um, the wall in Japan and he hits him again and he slides into the wall where his kind of head goes up against the yeah, wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do it. I, I I guess they 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 shot it in reverse so they could get him right up. But it looks like it and it yeah. just looks wonky. Yes. Then the punches that are flying, it's like the punch kind of it's like three feet away not even close but it's done to sort of just look a certain way right. and it's just all of it is just so awkward looking to me uh the dialogue is awkward the action is awkward and and weird and then of course when you actually get to them the part when he does the the awkward cartwheel yes. to pull the button to hit the guy with more mud yeah He's already submerged in mud. Yeah. More mud comes That's down. That's what does him in. That to me is like a naked gun moment. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, this this whole film, I mean, let's let's face it, this whole film did feel like an Austin Powers moment. Yeah. And I think that film is hurting my enjoyment of this film because I look <laughs> at everything from the hard hats to the campiness to even like a Bambi and Thumper. You know, throwing yeah. that in with no plot point whatsoever, but just to put him in another goofy situation. Yes. Like the Doom Buggy, you know, from from the aerospace thing. Yeah. All of these are <laughs> little like almost like pornographically singular they don't fit as yes. a whole james bond adventure yeah. to further where this guy is going yeah and that's a that's a great point too because it's one of the things i noticed this time around too when you watch like a doctor no there is a story there's a plot there is a villain with a a a goal in mind that we have to investigate and thwart there there is a linear progression to the story here, it really does feel like just a kind of odd stepping stone of yes. points of moments to go to go here and then to go there, to, to just sort of give you a, a, a collection of things to kind of sit with and go home yes. and remember. And I, I will say this, I mean, the film does have 
some memorable things. There are a couple lines that sort of stay with us. I mean, if you did like a kind of a highlight reel of the film, not knowing anything about it, right? Yeah, you'd probably look at it and say some that's of the car stunts. I would watch. Some of the car stunt stuff was yeah, interesting. The yeah. Vegas stuff, and but whenever they're yeah. in Vegas, I almost feel like they're doing a documentary on Vegas, and Sean Connery's yeah. James Bond happens to be there. Yes, it's like then, oh, there's James Bond. Then, now shoot a clown. Right. And by the way, it is oddly timely. Again, there is something I I got to get your opinion on. Okay. It's 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 a it's a theory I call the Marcus Brody theory. And that is, it came from um, the third uh, Indiana Jones film, Last mm -hmm. Crusade, where Marcus Brody starts out as this really smart, intelligent guy. Yes. And by halfway through, he's yes. like, uh, hello, can Ooh. you introduce me to, do oh you know? Uh, yes. Well, guess what? They did it to Tiffany Chase, too. Oh, yeah. She starts out yeah. hard hitting, no crap. You know, yes. you're a misogynist. I'm going to break your. And then yeah. in the end, she's like, eee. Oh. Oh my and, god. Oh you're put a put a cassette up my butt. Yikes. Yeah. Oh. oh my goodness. Right. I no. mean intelligent femme fatale to bimbo in, in 30 seconds. How to destroy a character in two hours. Am I right? Oh boy, that's, crazy. that's that's painful. And again, and, and it's terrific. Again, it's it's tough because she, again, she was such a good character. She started out strong. The actress is great, and and honestly, one of the few actresses now when you watch her in documentaries that has a really good. Um, she's very good spirited about having done a Bond film, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah. Oh boy, to have her sort of go down in infamy is like you know Quickly. one of the bigger bimbos. Sure. Oh yeah. my goodness. And but that's and yeah, that's the struggle of the film. It's like there there really is no interest in actual storytelling. You know, no. there's, I mean, there's no character arcs except for bad ones if yeah. there are. Um, story wise, it just doesn't work. There's, it's clunky at best. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a tough one because, you know, yeah. I, I stopped. So I, I watched the whole thing like you did. And then I tried to take it as a whole. Mm. And I started adding up, you know, bad guy. Um, was it Bondish? Was it Sean Connery Bond? Even yeah. though, you know, name wise, yeah. it was him. But I thought about a lot from Dr. No and from Russia with Love and Thunderbolt, how Connery acted during those parts. Mm. And when I think about what he acted like in Diamonds Are Forever, yeah. I feel like he had it out for them. I feel like he was like, I am not going to bring my A game. You can't right. make me. Right. You can pay me off, but I'm not going right. to. No. You can't have my soul. I am not going to put my I'm heart into this it. film. Yeah, it is It is bizarre. It's bizarre watching him do it. And, I mean, and again, there's so many weird. There's, there's sort of a, a weirdness that I can't even put my finger on. Like, there's lines. When they bury him in the, in the, in the big uh, pipeline. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he, and there's the a mouse there. Yeah, the and he rat. says, you know, one of us smells like a tart's handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a funny line, but a weird line. Like yeah. like the tone of that doesn't. It's almost like let let's take a posh, sophisticated <laughs> actor and give him these, like like it's almost like the James Bond answer to a '70s porno in a way. Like I mean, it's a weird analogy, I know, but it's yeah. like you're, you're this really kind of trashy cheesy movie where you're putting James Bond in it to try to come up with sort of a, an amalgam of the two or a mixture and see, let's see what comes of it yeah. and that's why you get Connery's odd lines and, and just sort of overall weirdness the character of Plenty O'Toole, again, played by the wonderful Lana Wood who is right. terrific in real oh, life yeah, yeah. You know, and again, a, and a great character and a fun light-hearted character but, but then when you sort of go back and say, what is this exactly? Is this a, a film... Does, is Bond generally picking up a prostitute in this movie? Well, what's it for, too? That, my my right, biggest thing yeah, playing was the point. Is, it's like in in the previous films, in the Connery older films, the bad villainous and the good Bond girls, yeah. they play a specific part. Even even yes. his friends, some of them, yeah. like in Thunderbolt, they get killed. You know, it's like yeah, very yeah. serious. Now, Plenty O'Toole, which, you know, Lana Wood is the nicest person in the, yeah, in the world. Yeah, wonderful person. But she's introduced to show, you know, Oh, a voluptuous woman um, getting thrown and then going back for revenge and then getting killed. Mm. But but it doesn't further along. If if you did it to show me yeah. that these guys are bad, I knew that. 
There was yeah. nothing that furthered the plot along other right. than, oh shit, you know, James Bond has to be with a woman. Yeah. Right yeah. in Plenty O'Toole and there's a funny joke in there. Exactly, yeah. It really is just the weirdest. And again, like you said, I mean, when you talk talk about a throwaway character, well, you're sort of taking that literally with this film. Because yeah. She's there long enough just to get thrown out the window. Um, yeah, and you're right. What is the point at that point of the movie? That's what I mean. There is, there is no... Story-wise, that does not make yeah. any sense. All right, so so I have to mention something that I thought about. And I was thinking, like, come on, David, you know, there's got to be something. Um, I will tell you that when I was younger, I enjoyed this film much more than mm -hmm. now that I'm like this persnickety old man banging <laughs> a cane. Yeah. Um, I liked it when I was younger because it was kind of that campier Roger Moore. I remember seeing the Roger mm. Moore stuff first yeah. and then going back and seeing Connery. And I remember seeing the right, Connery right. ones that were very serious and being like, wow. Yes. And then I yeah. saw this one. I'm like, well, there it is. There's my fun James uh -huh. Bond. Okay. So I've, I've, it's gotten, unfortunately, worse with time with me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. As, it, as it will. Again, you know, it, it is... There, there's a place for. See, it's kind of funny. I always sort of look at the the seventies Bond movies, and I and I've always, you know, again, when you become kind of a hardcore Bond fan, that those are that's the period that you go, ooh, I hate that stuff. Mm. But it is also the part of the Bond franchise that carried us from yeah. a time when when people wanted a hard hard boiled spy movie back to when people wanted a more realistic spy movie, and there was that window in between where we needed it to be entertaining enough for, to sort of tide us over yes and again i do feel that those sort of films did keep the bond franchise alive until sure. we do get back to something that's a little more of what what you and i might like to see yes uh and it is it is light-hearted fun and and you know again i don't mind the light-hearted bond films necessarily right um but i mind them if they're poorly done and i kind of feel like this one is really just sort of awkward all around yeah um i mean and wind and kid boy are they a strange pair and and um glover i i'm gonna forget who which one is which um but glover's character yeah. and i mean uh, again a family that just sort of generates crazy over the top actors yeah crispin glover yeah uh, yeah i mean he sure. he's he's pretty good in this but the other guy i look at him and i'm like is that somebody's brother-in-law out of out Isn't of work? Musician or something? Like I don't know. He didn't quite belong. His <laughs> he, acting was. He atrocious. really doesn't yeah. belong. And I, I mean, I look at him and I'm like, seriously, he looks like. I mean, he looks like a more out of shape version of Michael Stivic from All in the Family. <laughs> oh my God, yes, he does. He, does, he <laughs> right? looks like Meathead. So, right, he looks, he looks like Meathead. But, yeah, but, but, meathead. But, 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 but this guy looks at Meathead and thinks, whoa, I wish I could look that good. That's true. You know, That's I mean, he, like, he, like I said, he looks like somebody's out of work brother. A, you know? a sign of the times. Hair, yeah, right. hair grooming was not a not a big thing. But Weird. yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, here's the thing. They are the, quote unquote, they're the henchmen. Yeah. Um, I think they've got some really maniacal, like insidious moments. But they're camping over the top. The right. thing with the dentist and like looks at him and <laughs> it's like, oh, he falls for the old scorpion down his back. It's almost like dun 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 dun. Right. It's like, ha! Huh. Although I will say, with some of the bad guys, my favorite line, you'll never guess it, <laughs> my favorite line from this movie, I tend to quote all the time, and I do it with you. I got a brother. I got a brother. I, yeah. I, I got, got a, a brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That still cracks me up. It, 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 it's, yeah, again, it's, this is one of the ones where I, 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 I kind of hate picking on it too much I because know. it's just silly fun. It's and, got heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. I think maybe th that might be where I would disagree with you. The, the steak has I think been it's put lacking. Into the yeah, well, yeah. That's that's the thing. I kind of feel like it's it's lacking in the energy. Again, if you're gonna make a fun over the yeah. top Bond movie, go ahead, but put a little more effort into it. I mean, I mean, just, keep this the is a story. Movie, keep the story strong. Keep right. Keep, give us something to keep us engaged yes. with the whole thing. I mean, this is a film that is best known for its blooper. Right. You know. I mean, well, this is the one. That, you know, all right. That, I'll I'll take it back for you because you know you have you have said on record that your favorite Roger Moore is Octopus. Pussy. Mm. Octopussy's fun. You know, Sit and the Tarzan yell. It's got these moments, but yeah. the story is so good. Yes. The bad guy, you yeah. know, the, the, the femme fatale yeah. are so strong, and she stays strong throughout the whole thing. Her, yeah. her women kick ass and save the sure. day. Yeah. Why not do that? Yeah. I mean, Octopussy, it's funny, because those weird little lines in Octopussy, to me, are, are, are very much unforgivable, but they're sort of done in a way 
that, that they're almost like they're almost like the little moles on an otherwise perfect body and if you just sort of took them off everything else would be great or like most people like you and i come to appreciate the moles like you love the moles. You, right there you go you know exactly like, you take it for what it is yeah. um but this one again the problems are just entrenched in in the yeah. the, the, fi right. the very fiber of the film so here we go <laughs> Here, here comes the swinging wrecking ball, <laughs> which you full encountered. Aww. Um, Joe Darlington. Mm. Uh, Sean Connery and, and, and Diamonds Are Forever. Is it his worst? Worst. Quack, 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 quack. Easily his worst. <laughs> Not, I, I, think it, I think it's his worst I by a substantial margin, frankly. Yeah, and I think it was always going to be his last. He was never going to do another one. Sure. I don't think they went, oh, this was crap. Don't hire the guy again. I think they would have hired him in a second. Yeah. Kept him going. But, of course, he was done done. And maybe he was like, you know, stick a fork in me. I'm overdone yeah. and overcooked. Yeah. But clearly, um, I think if you lined up his amazing legacy, and you can't take anything away from him. Sure. And you put this one there, I think most people would identify it as his worst. I, I think so. I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, if, if it's not this, what could it possibly be? Um, and, again, I... I look at this film and I just wonder what the producers were thinking. Yeah. Because again, even if you feel that, you know, trying to bring back as many elements from Goldfinger as you possibly could to sort of hodgepodge together another film, yes. which again ends up looking like um like a like a rummage bin of of, of things, um, where do you go from there? Yeah. You know you you can maybe get one more out of Connery. Well so why even bother at that point? So we uh We've got an interesting, I wouldn't say dilemma. Let's call it a challenge or opportunity. Uh -huh. Look at me being positive. Uh, we, the next movie, or the next Bond actor, George Lazenby, only has one movie, which we've talked about already. That's true, yeah. So we can uh, claim it as the best or the worst, but it kind of is a little pointless right. to do a whole separate thing. So we're going to jump George. Well, poor George. And we're going to go to Roger Moore. There you go. And Joe and I will return... In A View to a Kill. We will. You ready for that? I am ready. All right. So this has been David Zaritsky. And Joe Darlington. We'll see you real soon. Thank you. Thank you.